Pulley was developed by Rockstar Vancouver and released on the 17th of October 2006 on the PlayStation 2. Remastered versions in the form of the Scholarship Edition and the Anniversary Edition were released on later dates, but PlayStation players will always have to do with the original PlayStation 2 port. People outside of the US and some other countries got the game with the alternative title Canis Canem Edit, meaning Dog Eat Dog in Latin. This was changed because of the title, Bully caused a lot of controversy. In fact, this wasn't the only controversy, a lot of outrage was caused when the game was released because of the nature of the game, even being banned in some countries. Often being overshadowed by Rockstar Games' other big titles like the Grand Theft Auto series and the Red Dead Redemption series, Bully still has its own dedicated community with people still praising the game and making videos about it. The Nathan NS is a great YouTube channel covering everything Bully related, like cunt content, beta content, sequel news, etc. Make sure to check him out if you're interested. Link is in the description. Bully is an unrated game. While I agree with this statement, in my opinion, the title of Rockstar's most unrated game still goes to another title. But Bully is still worth checking out and worth going for the Platinum. So without further ado, welcome to Bully. We meet 15 year old Jimmy Hopkins while he is being sent to a private boarding school called Bullworth's Academy. After being dropped off by our mom and our new stepdad, we go and introduce ourselves to the head of the school, Dr. Crabble Snitch. He tells us to keep our noses clean, but this is quickly ignored when we are headed to the boys' dorm room, where we meet our first clique of the school, the bullies. After the fight tutorial, the head of the bullies, Russell, knocks us down, but before the fight continues, it gets interrupted by a teacher. He tells us to go to our room and put on our uniform. It's here we meet Gary, who introduces us to Pete. Together with this newly formed misfit crew, we go and explore the school, and in the cafeteria, we meet the rest of the cliques. First up, the weakest of them all, the nerds, headed by Ernest Jones. Next, the rich and spoiled preppies, headed by Derby Harrington. In contrast to the preppies, there are the old school leather wearing greasers, headed by Johnny Vincent. And lastly, we have the more powerful, hot headed jocks, headed by Ted Thompson. After this, we go and complete our first class, chemistry. These classes are short little mini-games that reward us with various benefits after passing each class. In the game there are a total of 6 subjects with 5 classes in each subject, leaving us with a total of 30 classes that we need to complete in order to unlock the Platinum Trophy. We meet back up with Dr. Krabblesnitch, who lectures us about our recent fight, not seeing that this school is filled with bullies and we only protected ourselves. One of the bullies oversees this conversation and calls us a teacher's pet. We chase him down, beat him up and are rewarded with one of the most useful weapons of the game, the slingshot. Afterwards, we go and see one of the nerds, Alchi, and escort him to the toilet, while fighting off bullies, gaining respect of the nerds as a result. After this, I completed two more classes, gaining our first trophy of the game for completing a total of three classes. <laughs> We go back to the boys dorm and meet back up with Gary and Pete. We go and test our new slingshot on the worn down school bus on the school's parking lot. Behind this bus lives a homeless guy who teaches us new fighting moves during the game whenever we give him radio parts. Afterwards Gary tells us about his big plan of taking over the school, but because we have been expelled from too many schools now we don't take part of this plan. LG walks in and asks us to rescue Bucky one of the other nerds. After this mission, we are rewarded with a skateboard that will make traveling long distances somewhat quicker. Since we are getting along with the nerds and gaining more respect, two other nerds ask us for help. First Beatrice, who wants her notes back, and secondly Ernest, who is running for president but is being harassed by the jocks. Now comes Halloween, where we once again team up with Gary and Pete and pull pranks on other students. We also smash pumpkins and tombstones that will be more important later for this platinum. Sometime later, Gary tells us to come with him to the school's basement for his big plan. After navigating the basement, we end up in a pit together with Russell. It was a setup by Gary, 
who became paranoid that Jemmy would ruin his plan for taking over the school, so he wants to humiliate us by getting beat up by Russell. We end up winning and form a bond with the big guy that will last throughout the whole game. With that, chapter 1 comes to an end and the school gates open for us to explore Bullworth, start a new chapter and earn our second trophy. Chapter 2 and 3 sort of have the same progression in my opinion, so I will group them together. Chapter 2 is about the preppies, while the third chapter is all about their rivals, the greasers. Both chapters start with us gaining the respect of respective cliques. In chapter 2 we box our way to the top, while in chapter 3 we gain respect by taking pictures of Lola, the girlfriend of Johnny Vincent, who is cheating on him with one of the preps, who will later lead to Johnny and help beat up. In both chapters we quickly lose respect from both cliques with lies told by Gary. Instead of gaining the respect back by doing tasks for each clique, we turn against them and take them by force. In chapter 2 we race, we go into their hideout on school and destroy their surprise plant, crash a party and just generally beat up a bunch of them. While in chapter 3 we also race, we tag their turf with graffiti and also beat up a bunch of greasers. In both chapters we also take the girl of each leader. Pinky from the Preppies and Lola from the Greasers. Each chapter ends with us confronting the head of each clique. In chapter 2 we do so by becoming the boxing champion and beating up Derby Harrington. And in chapter 3 we beat up some Greasers so Johnny gets drawn out and we can follow him and beat him up. Resulting in us becoming the head of each clique and gaining our respect. During both chapters I collected a total of 5 trophies. 2 for completing chapter 2 and 3, 1 for completing 6 classes, 1 for completing 10 errant missions, and 1 last one for having 100% respect from both clicks at the same time. If you are enjoying this video, a like, comment and a subscribe would greatly be appreciated. Now on with the story. Chapter 4 is different from the previous two chapters because instead of dealing with the jocks on their own, we find help in the nerds. After first showing the nerds, we are their new leader by beating up Ernest. Ernest tells us about his big plan to take over the jocks. And it's on us to set this plan in motion. First on the agenda is taking explicit photos of the jocks girl Mandy. But later we stop the nerds from spreading the pictures around town, without her ever knowing it was us who took the pictures, and she starts to like us now. The jocks retaliate by attacking the nerds hideout at the carnival and the observatory. It's on us to protect the nerds. Next up on Ernest's plan is to lead the mascot of Burworld Academy, the Bull, to the pool where we beat them up and disguise ourselves in the costume without the jocks ever knowing it was us right underneath their noses. Now the big plan can start. We pull pranks on the jocks that weaken them until we are finally confronted by their leader Ted. Where we beat him up in one of the best parts of the game in my opinion, even though it ends a little weird. With that we gain the respects of one of the most feared cliques of the school and receive a trophy for completing chapter 4. Chapter 5 starts with us being the king of the school, with all of the cliques respecting us and us hanging out with all of the leaders. The school is finally at peace, but Pete reminds us that Gary is still out there somewhere. We ignore his warnings and head to the town hall where we put a mark on the city to show who is king now. When we return back to the school, everything is in shambles, with us getting the blame for it all. We lost respect from all of the cliques, excluding the bullies. The nerds because the library has been filled with rats, the jocks because their gym has been set on fire, the greasers because the leader has been sent to the asylum, and the preps because their boxing trophies have been stolen. Even though we help each clique and even prove to some of them it was the townies who are responsible for everything, we still take the blame. And we even get expelled from the school. Next up we meet one of the dropouts named Zoe Taylor, who has been expelled from school because she told Dr. Krabblesnitch that the gym teacher hit on her. 
we take revenge on the perverted teacher and even go on a date with her, resulting in her liking us now. During our investigation on who burned the preps trophies, we found out that the townies, also called the dropouts, were responsible for everything that we were expelled for. So, with the help of the only person that's still on our side, Russell, we break into the industry plant where we find the leader of the townies, called Edgar. He confesses that Gary had set him up and the townies to cause havoc on the school. To make things right, we recruit them, some townies and Russell, to break into the school, because we heard from Zoe that the school is in complete mayhem since nobody had any rule over the school. In order to restore the school, we have to once again face off with each head of the cliques. First the Creasers and Johnny in the girls' dorm, then the Jocks and Ted in the library, the Preps and Derby in their own hideout, and lastly the Nerds and Ernest in the gym. Lastly we face off with Gary who tells us why he did it. The thing is, if I win, you're just another punk! You win, and you'll be sent away even quicker for beating up the head boy! Why'd you do it, Gary? Because I can! Because making little people like you and the morons who run this place eat out of the palm of my hand feels great! But I never did anything to you! You would've if I'd given you the chance! Face it, I'm smarter than you! Oh, congratulations! <laughs> You're smarter than me! You hate everyone and everyone hates you! Genius! The head likes me! I tied him up, turned his dumb school into a battleground, got kids expelled, unfairly, put several others into therapy, and he still likes me! You're such a loser! <laughs> well, at least my mom doesn't make her living on her back! You're dead! <laughs> no! This is heard by Dr. Krabblesnitch, who quickly expels him and allows us to come back to the school, after we beat up Gary. With that, we have restored the school back to what it was at the beginning of the chapter, and have beaten the game, earning ourselves a trophy. <coughs> Alongside two other trophies we got during the last chapter, one for spending 5 hours after curfew, <coughs> and one for having a thousand dollars in our pocket. <coughs> It's also worth to mention that during the main game, there are a couple of missions that I didn't mention in my rundown of the story. These included a storyline with two teachers who had beef with one another, Mr. Galloway and Mr. Hattrick. A storyline where the school cook, Edna, went on a date with the chemistry teacher, Dr. Watts. And a mission where we had to retrieve panties from the gym teacher, Mr. Burton. Now on with the cleanup trophies of this platinum. Even though I labeled this part as a cleanup part, it still took more time than the completing the story itself. So let's not waste any more time and go over all 26 remaining trophies. First I got a trophy for kissing 25 girls, completed 20 errant missions and then 10 more missions for the 30 total errant missions. Set 100 total taunts against enemies. Went to the carnival and completed all 5 carnival go-kart races. While at the carnival I also played the shooting minigame where I had to shoot a total of 300 bottles. Mowed the lawn 10 times. Completed all 3 street go-kart races. During the game, I also made sure to do as many classes as possible, and now finally I completed all 30 classes. I knocked down a total of 200 opponents, jacked 20 bicycles, kicked 100 soccer balls, traveled 50 kilometers on my skateboard, Hit 50 people with sting bomb and tripped 25 people with marbles. Picked 50 flowers. Performed 200 wheelies on the bike. Act 25 cars. Gave 50 wedges. Now came the more grindy trophies of this platinum. Jimmy's room in the boys' dorm is decorated with memorabilia from missions and achievements. 
there are a total of 36 in-game trophies that we need to collect in order to unlock the trophy. At this point I already unlocked 31 trophies by completing the story and doing other tasks. The last 5 remaining in-game trophies were unlocked by destroying 25 gnomes, completing level 4 of the paper route missions, completing all 14 bike races, and the last 2 in-game trophies can be bought at the carnival. With that I collected all 36 in-game trophies and earned ourselves a new trophy. I traveled a total of 100 kilometers on both foot and bike. I purchased 250 clothing items. Achieved a high score on the Kazumo, Nutshot and Monkey Fling arcade games. Now came the grandiest trophy of them all, the Problem Child Trophy, which sees us amassing 160,000 trouble points. Trouble points are gained by breaking the rules. The more trouble you get in, the more points you gain. When I started going for the trophy, I had amassed 60,000 trouble points, so there was still a way to go. On the internet, I found three methods to speed up the process. The first one is to take out our go-kart and run over as many adults as possible while evading the cops. The second one is to cause as many chaos in the boys' dorm room as possible since there is no way to get busted inside the building. And then third and ultimately the option I went for was to climb in a tree and shoot as many adults as possible with our slingshots since nobody can reach us. And eventually I got the trophy. Finally I bought a total of 100 sodas to get the final trophy. With that I collected every trophy and got the platinum trophy. Thank you for watching, take care and bye for now.